From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now, in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Tarzan and the killer. The city of Luanda, south of the equator, deep in Africa, boasts of no Yankee Stadium or Madison Square Garden. But wherever men gather, they will pay to see other men fight. The low, rambling wooden building was jammed with its motley crowd, and great arc lights added to the almost intolerable heat as two sweat-soaked men in the center of a crude ring swung savagely at each other. One was a shining black with rippling muscles, the other a white giant who was more than seven feet tall and weighed over 300 pounds. His eyes were red-rimmed, and a great scar on his forehead shone red with fury. Killer! Murder this one! The black is down! The killer's on top of him! Punch him! Punch him again! Hey, this is supposed to be a boxing match! It's a fight! That's what it is! Die with it, killer! Don't let him pull you off the blighter! That's it! Pull him off! Throw him out! He don't belong in a ring! Toss him out in the alley! Hey, 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 hey. They threw me out. Yeah. I'll help you up, Governor. Yeah. It took 20 of them to do it. Yeah. Put this coat over your shoulders. Who are you? Name's Herbert Graves. I'm your friend, you know. Oh, they won't let me fight here, I guess. Them and their rules. You've had a spot of trouble before? All over. If they let me fight my way, I could be the world's champion. I'd be famous. I'd be rich. I'll make you rich, mighty. <laughs> so you don't like to fight under the marquee of Queensbury rules, I eh, chum? I start out all right. But then I get hit and I go crazy. I want to kill the other guy. You know something, killer? I think you and me's going to be real good friends. You want to kill, and I know a bloke by the name of Tarzan who needs killing real bad. And while you're going to fight him, there won't be no bloody rules and no referee. You can do whatever you likes. I can? That you can. Killer. And so was formed the unholy alliance that soon terrorized the countryside about Luanda. Under the tutelage of Herbert Graves, the savage killer adopted the methods of the London footpads. And soon stories of robberies and savage beatings were being told everywhere. But they did not reach Tarzan. He had been in Luanda only a few days before. But now he was back in his seacoast cabin. He was resting and amusing himself with a parrot he had recently acquired. <laughs> oh, I'm going to give you one more chance, Juanita. Either you learn how to talk or I make stew out of you. Just tell it. <laughs> try saying your name. Juanita. Juanita. <laughs> All right, then... Uh... Well, uh, uh, try to say my name. Tarzan. Tarzan. Tarzan? Good boy. <laughs> you just saved yourself from the kettle. Uh, a knock. And the scent of a tamangani, a white man. I was so preoccupied with you that I... Who knocks at Tarzan's door? Captain Lawrence of the governmental police. Captain Lawrence, come in. Good to see you, my friend. Oh, thank you, Tarzan. Meet the rest of my family. Captain Lawrence, this is Juanita. Uh? <laughs> He's really very talented. Juanita, say uh, Captain Lawrence. Captain Lawrence. Come on, try it. He might arrest you if you won't say his name. Come on, Lawrence. Uh? Hmm, very talented. <laughs> well, he's pretty young yet. He's, he's mastered my name. Uh, say Tarzan. Tarzan? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you must admit, that's pretty good for a baby. You see, I had another parrot, one I named Bill, but Bill turned out to be a female, so I chose one of her sons. But 
You call the bird Juanita. Uh, not Juanita, the Spanish name. His name is Wa, W-A, Nita, N-E-E-T-A. In the language of the apes, Wa means green and Nita means bird. In the language of the apes as well as the language of the natives and the French and English. You're amazing, Tarzan. I uh, that? Oh, I really think... I've he... always had a great deal of respect for your mental accomplishments as well as your physical ones. What are you getting at, Captain Lawrence? Now, you know, you didn't travel all this distance to make a flattering speech to me. No, Tarzan, I didn't. I say these things because I've been saying them to myself all the way here. How could a man like Tarzan be responsible for savage beatings, robberies, and other despicable crimes? What? Tarzan, I have come here to arrest you to take you back to Ibadan for trial. We shall return to our exciting story of Tarzan in just a moment. Ibadan is the largest Negro city of Africa, and yet there were few people on its sweltering streets as Captain Lawrence led Tarzan through the opening in the mud walls that enclosed the city, past the low thatched huts of the natives, past the mosques and the orishas, the idol houses, and into one of the few European-style buildings. Although the officer who had brought Tarzan from the jungle was British, the man he soon faced was a native, the Alafin of the province of Oyo, a man whose sworn duty it was to combine the orthodox law of England and the traditional justice of the dark continent. Step forward, Tarzan. Hi, that? Here, I'll hold Juanita. Your Honor, Captain Lawrence has told me that I am charged with a variety of serious crimes, yet he has furnished no details. Before we go further, I demand to know the particulars. Your words are brave for a prisoner. I do not consider myself a prisoner. I came willingly. Had I been unwilling to face your court, a dozen Lawrences could not have brought me from my jungle. That I can believe. Even a brave soldier like Captain Lawrence would be as nothing against a giant who can twist the iron bars that protect the government supply depot. I am supposed to have done that? Strangled three men and robbed them of their purses. I am accused of that, too? Desecrated a native temple and stolen the golden sacramental vessels, overpowering six native guards and leaving them beaten beyond recognition. What makes you think I am the guilty one? The description tallies. I have more than a score of affidavits in which both natives and Europeans describe the powerful seven-foot man who was responsible for the foul deeds I enumerated. I do not stand seven feet in height. One must allow for exaggeration. Am I the only man in Africa who is tall and powerful? All of these acts were committed near Luanda. Do you deny that you have been there lately? No, I admit it. I escorted a woman there. So I heard. A woman who was wanted by the police of a dozen countries. Is that not so? I was exonerated. You will not extricate yourself from these charges so easily. Not when you have had the temerity to brag of your feats of strength in a local cafe. I suppose as I bragged of my exploits, I announced my name. Your name was wrung from the lips of your accomplice. He admitted you were Tarzan. I that? My accomplice. I suppose you refer to Juanita here. I refer to the Cockney who is reputedly your constant companion. The evidence is damning, Tarzan. You will have a fair trial, but in the meantime, you will be remanded to a cell. A cell? And I should not attempt escape. You will be guarded by a troop of trained riflemen who have been instructed to shoot before you draw close enough to use the powerful hands with which you have mangled your other victims. And while Tarzan languished in his cell in Ibadan, Herbert Graves and the seven-foot giant who had been barred from every prize ring in the world hid out in a small shack on the outskirts of Luanda. I don't like this place. It gives me the creeps. Well, now, talk it easy, Killer. We've got to lie off for the mouth. Why? Because Tarzan's been arrested. As long as he's behind bars in Ibadan, they can't blame him for what we do here. I don't like what we're doing anyway. What's it got us? Coffee and cake money. Now, we'll have a slew of money before we're finished. You'll have more than you would have made as well as champagne. And I'll be walking down Park Lane in a frock coat and a pair of them striped trousers. We'll be rich, all right. When? As soon as Tarzan's dead. You see, a chum of mine discovered oil in that jungle. There's enough there to float the king's navy. Well, we 
And a misunderstanding with this bloke Tarzan, and he kicked us out of the jungle. But with him out of the way, we can move back in. Well, let's kill him. Let's go to this, this, whatever you said the name of the place was, where he's in jail. Ibadan. And it's crawling with coppers. No, my friend, we'll wait a while and see what happens. If Tarzan gets out of the clink, we'll kill somebody here and blame it on him. What good will that do? Well, they'll post a reward for him, they will, and then when you and him meet up, you can go ahead and kill him without worry. The government will pat you on the back. They'll finance our little expedition into the jungle. If we don't go after Tarzan, how we find him? <laughs> You'll find us, he will. You can bet your life he'll be looking for us. That's the way I planned it, I did. <laughs> But, Captain Lawrence, if you believed these things they say, you would not have come to my cell to visit me, to try and encourage me. I came so that I might warn you. The people of the city are milling about the jail, threatening to tear down the gates and deal with you themselves. Oh, without the benefit of a trial? Exactly. And that's something I take a dim view of, both as an officer and a citizen. Of course, you might drop the key to my cell on your way out. It would do you little good. You would find yourself facing that angry mob which aches to avenge the brutality they think you guilty of. And the riflemen? They're up front, too. I've ordered them to guard you. Should the mob break through, I question exactly where their loyalties lie. Then what can I do? No one guards the rear of the prison. The bars at your window are no heavier than those which guarded the government depot. And you do think I was the one who broke in there? You do think me guilty of all the other crimes? I don't know what to believe. But I know I'm against lynching. If I could gain my freedom, I might be able to find the real criminal. Thank you, Captain Lawrence. Not at all. I must clear my name. But these bars... of a jump. Well, Juanita. Bullets whizzed close to Tarzan's head, but fate had ordained that none should strike him. With Juanita, the parrot clutching at his shoulder, Tarzan crashed into the jungle and turned his fleet footsteps toward the city of Luanda. Now the mute testimony of the twisted bars of his cell added evidence against the lord of the jungle. All of Africa was warned to watch out for him. The news reached Luanda, and the next day Tarzan was a hunted man. Now's our chance to strike, mighty. Where are we going? There's an old chief out this way. Sort of a strange bird lives apart from his tribe. Gets an allowance from the government, he does. Uh, I ain't interested in getting some old guy's money. You promised this me This is to... your chance to kill, mighty. This is the murder we blame on Tarzan. Uh, this must be his cabin. Jumbo, white man? We're looking for an old chief supposed to live here. Old chief very sick. Can't speak to no one. He'll speak to us, he will. Come on, Tarzan. Huh? Oh, yeah, sure. Get out of the way, you. Huh. There he is. Hello, Chief. He not talk for many moons. He old man who is dying. Well, we won't be doing him much harm, will we, Tarzan? Who's the girl? What about her? Yeah. Who are you, Ducky? Me, Barwani, granddaughter of Chief. Come from village to care for grandfather. Well, ain't that nice. At least you can tell her folks what happened to the chief's money. And they am. Shall I go ahead? Yes, Tarzan. Go ahead. No, please, please, old man. No, no. Captain Lawrence, I strongly suspect you know more about Tarzan's escape than you are willing to admit. I... I don't know a thing. I was with my men. We will not discuss the matter further, Captain Lawrence. 
but you may rest assured that I hold you personally responsible for recapturing him. I'll look for him, and I still think it's all a big mistake. He couldn't be guilty of the crimes he was accused of. That was for a court to decide, but now those charges are of little importance. Those charges? Word of his further activities has just been received from Luanda, and as a result, I have issued orders to have him captured, dead or alive. Tarzan is wanted for murder. We'll be back with the exciting conclusion of Tarzan and the Killer in just a moment. After mile of dense jungle was left behind as Tarzan sped toward the city of Luanda. Now the forest was alive with the scent of man, for everywhere patrols searched for the one they believed guilty of murder. Tarzan was unaware of this latest charge. Still, it was his habit to avoid contact with humans as much as possible. So he kept from the paths and clearings until suddenly he caught the scent of man and of hungry panther, coming from the same direction. Run for your life! A tree! Spring for a tree! I don't think I can. Watch out! He's crouching! Uh, you haven't a chance. Uh, oh, this is incredible. The uh, panther's trying to escape now. Hey, won't escape. Uh, uh. With a small hunting knife, I never would have believed it. Uh! Why did you do that? It is the way of Tarzan. Your Tarzan? Yes. And who are you? Why do you come into the jungle unarmed? I had a gun. I dropped it in my flight from the panther. Oh, here it is. On the ground. Here you are. I'd uh, keep that close if I were you. I'll say I will. Hands up. What? Don't try to move or I'll send a bullet right through your heart. I don't understand your actions. I'm part of a patrol out looking for you, Tarzan. I got separated from the others, but they'll be along soon. We don't hold much traffic with murderers. Murderers? Oh, no, don't try to deny killing that old chief near Luanda. His granddaughter put the finger on you, all right. I have seen no native chief in many moons, nor have I seen the granddaughter of any chief. The man who committed the crime must have been the same one who committed the others. You'll get a fair trial, I guess, and I'll get a reward. And my reward for saving your life is to be taken back to Ibadan without having a chance to find the real murderer. Well, you did save my life, but we're under orders. Would you rather follow your orders or your heart? I don't follow you. Did your heart identify the man who saved your life as one who would kill wantonly? No. Well, then give me a chance. You can stay with me. You can keep your thunder stick aimed at my back, but give me a chance to clear my name. Okay, it's a bargain. Only I hope I won't be sorry for this later on. Tarzan's pace was slower, for he had agreed to stay within rifle shot of the man whose life he had saved and who had spared him. The man was an ever-present shadow as Tarzan, with Juanita still perching on his shoulder, entered a small clearing. Well, Juanita, it looks as though we're not the most popular citizens of the jungle. I uh, <laughs> I wouldn't mention that name if people find out you're a friend of mine. <laughs> uh, uh. Anyway, we're getting closer to my double. Here's the hut of the old man he killed. Is anyone inside? Watu Nadani? Nadi, Buwane Nadani. Jumbo. Jumbo Buana? You are Bawani, whose grandfather was killed by a thief? Nadio. Do you know who I am, Bawani? Seal. I am Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. But all that man, man who killed grandfather. Did you see him? Lilimona? Lilimona? You saw him. Well, do you think I am the same man? Matu? Nene Repu. Taller and fatter than I am, huh? I shall need you for a witness, Barwani, for I shall find this man if it's the last thing I do. Anakwendawapi? Maji Bawana. Then I shall go to the village also. And for his own sake, he'd better be as big and as strong as his reputation. 
The native village of Yomboya, not far distant from Luanda, was in a state of terror. For days now, the great giant who masqueraded as Tarzan had held the city in virtual hostage. Those who had attempted to deny him anything or to cross him in the slightest whim had been savagely beaten. And in all of this, he was encouraged by the unscrupulous Herbert Graves. Well, Governor, looks like we'll have to pour our own drinks. The natives have all bought. If they don't wait on me, I'll kill them. <laughs> there ain't one of them I couldn't kill with one hand. Well, soon you'll have an opponent worthy of you, mighty. Tarzan ought to be along any more. I can kill him, too. I know you can, chum. And once he's dead, I can move back into that jungle where there's all that oil I told you about. We'll be rich. I ain't interested in money. You've killed a slew of men to get it, you have. Well, that was because you told me to. I do what you say. I like you. And I likes you, killer. It's you who's going to kill Tarzan for me. It's you who's going to fill me pockets with hundred-pound notes. I'll be so rich, I'll throw the ten-pound notes into the gutter. Hey. You got awful quiet all of a sudden. Huh? Yeah. But it did, Governor. Yeah. Now, I guess the village must have turned in for the night. Hi, Val! Quiet, Juanita. Those must be the men inside. I think I recognize an old enemy and a new one. I would not go inside, Tarzan. Captain Lawrence! In this squalid village, I... I couldn't catch your scent. I've been following you ever since you escaped from prison. There's a reward out for you. Yes, so I hear. And now you want to collect it, huh? Ma? No. I followed you to keep you from digging yourself in deeper. And those men inside. I am confident that the huge one is the one who has used my name. The other is a man who once invaded my jungle. He mistreated the natives and schemed to take my life. He must be behind all this. Tarzan... In following you, I stumbled across definite evidence that proves you were right in your contentions. When I return to Ibadan, I will clear your name. Thank you. And you needn't worry about the man whose life you saved and who has permitted you to come this far. I shall not report him. Once again, I thank you. But I can do little if you take matters in your own hands. You have a troop of soldiers with you? No. Then hold Juanita for me. Yeah. <laughs> I refuse to let anyone else risk a life to clear me. I shall go inside and capture the man who has used my name. When we return to Ibadan, he shall be our most potent evidence. No, Tarzan, I beg of you. He towers over you and he's... Good evening, gentlemen. It's him. I see that you ignored the good advice I once gave you, Herbert Graves. To stay out of Africa? <laughs> You're not giving any orders to Herbert Graves. Not when he has a friend like the killer here. The killer? That is a name of which he is proud... What's wrong with my name? Nothing. I hear it fits you well. He's insulting you, Kenner. Let him have it. He ain't as big as me, not as tall, and not as heavy. I can kill him. Sure you can. Have at him. Only watch out for his knife. I don't need a knife against any man. You need more than a knife before I get through with you. Kill the blighter. Pick me, will you? Is this knife, Kenner? Give me that. Now. The killer's red-rimmed eyes gleam with maniacal fury. The knife in his hand flashed down and then spun from his grasp. His sinewy hands wrenched it free. The men went down, the great weight of the giant on top of Tarzan. But Tarzan slithered away, and the killer, nimble for all his bulk, sprang to his feet. The furniture was smashed against the walls of the tiny native cafe as the men struggled furiously. Natives spewed from every hut in the village, joining the two white men who watched the savage struggle from outside the cafe. Captain Lawrence, don't shoot. Never could be sure of getting the right one. Ah, uh, Tarzan bleeding. Other one too, both bleeding bad. They're working their way out of the door. Yeah. They both seem to be blinded by the blood in their eyes. Yeah. They're struggling for an advantage. They're trying to outmaneuver one another. Yeah. Oh. They back themselves into a hut in the rear. Is storage space for earthenware. Oh, you've got to do something, Captain Lawrence. Only one man can ever come out of that shack alive. Look! Herbert Graves runs away. Runs for jungle. Shall I go after him, Captain? No, no, he won't get far in that jungle alone. Well, it's 
Sounds as though the fight is over. I can't make myself look. If anything's happened to Tarzan, I'll be the one to blame. Someone's coming out now. Who is it? I, I can't tell. He's so battered, it's impossible. I'm back. The Paris right. It's Tarzan. <laughs> In just a moment, a preview of our next story. Long has Africa been a pawn in the game of international warfare. Because it is rich in gold and diamonds and ivory, nations have fought to acquire colonies there. How much greater is the threat to the peace of the dark continent when a new source of wealth and power is discovered in the heart of the jungle? War and tyranny and suffering hang like a great foreboding cloud in our next story, Jungle Legacy. Tarzan, a transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production.